So where we are is the question of is friction good or is friction bad? In other words, the most uh, popular saying amongst the uh, you know middle school, friction is a necessary evil, because of course uh, friction does this, right? On the one hand, I couldn't I couldn't do something as simple as this if if there were no friction. I can't hold a pen. I couldn't have opened the pen. None of none of this at all. And even the pen wouldn't write or the pencil wouldn't write if not for friction. Of course, I think the fountain pen would write. But if you take a pencil and you write. And what really happens is that friction carries away some of the graphite, and that's what you see as a mark on the paper. That was what you call writing, right? So things don't really happen without friction. Now, is this actually a very, very vague example? There are much more, even more simple ones. Like one of them being: imagine if there is what? What if there is no friction at all? How would you walk? What do we do? We need friction to walk. Of course, we do, right? Which is no wonder why Tom was slipping all the way on, on that alley. Right now, it's fun to watch him slip and you know laugh about it. But if you think about it, uh, if there were no friction, you would you would think that you're walking, but you'd pretty much be in the same place. You'd be sliding around in the same place. That'll take a. That's going to be a little irritating. You'll have, the only way you could walk is by or move is by pushing against something and then moving in the opposite direction. And that's probably the only thing that you could do. And think about vehicles. How would you stop them? Right? Once you start a vehicle, you pretty much have to keep going forever and ever and ever because. Nothing is going to be able to stop you. The only way you could probably stop is by crashing into something, and then you will come to a stop. So clearly, friction is making the world run in ways that are very useful. But of course, friction is also evil, right? Friction is a necessary evil. Means it also does things that we don't like it to do. Like one of them being it it wears everything out. You can't you have to buy you buy a shoe pair of shoes. You have to buy another one in another year because friction wears them out. So a lot of things that wear off because of friction. Another really important thing is that you, have you ever touched uh, any of these devices like grinder or something? If don't do this, but uh, you do know though, right? That a fan is actually quite hot. The main center part of the fan, where the motor is, is quite hot. Now, where is all this heat coming from? Yeah, there are parts that are moving against each other. Whenever there are parts that move against one against each other, so if you have one part and another part, and somewhere inside it's moving. So in a fan, it could be. Say the rotor against the magnet or anything at all. And inside, if something is moving and rubbing against each other, one another, you will get friction, and that's going to produce heat, which is exactly what we spoke about, right? You rub your hands like this, you get some heat. You strike a match, the friction is enough to provide enough heat for the match to light up, and then the chemical reaction takes care of it. Till then, it's friction. Now you might wonder, how does friction create heat? Because now we're talking about friction being evil, and it's creating heat in some cases, right? All that energy is wasted. So in a fan, the fan's job is just to pump air, right? So all its energy should go there ideally. It should rotate very, very fast. But after a while, it's working against friction. So some energy is lost. So I first want you to understand though how this energy loss happens. So you take the old block surface, right? All bonds are formed. Now you're stretching those bonds and breaking them. I want you to see that clearly now. And as we stretch those bonds and break them, what would happen if you stretch something really, really hard and leave it? It would be doing that, right? So if I take something and stretch it and then leave it, it would be vibrating there. Yeah, you could imagine that, don't you? So then, imagine as you're breaking more and more and more bonds, each of them is stretching and then and then and then, like as you can see, they're all vibrating, right? Now there are particles on top of that part which are also beginning to vibrate, right? And the surface is also vibrating. So eventually, what will you observe? That the vibrating particles are like it's like a domino effect. Some particles are vibrating. You go stand on top of it, you also have feel a vibration. You so you stand on top, you also feel a vibration, and so on and so forth. So then eventually the entire block is vibrating. Yeah, very soon you'll understand there is nothing but heat. Yeah, the kinetic energy, as it's called, of the particles of a particular body is nothing but the temperature of that body. Right, temperature and that are exactly the same. So that starts vibrating there. You put your hand on top of it, then what happens? All those blocks, molecules are already vibrating like that. You put your hands, then you also feel. The vibration molecules in your hand, right? Little pieces also start vibrating. That's what you call ah, that's hot. Yeah, that's exactly how this happens, right? So there's a lot of movement happening. So the amount, the force you apply, the in other words, the work you do, which you learn very soon, gets transmitted. It becomes heat eventually. It becomes the kinetic energy of those particles which hits you, and then you touch it. You also feel that heat. Even if you don't, it might sp- the particles of air around it also feel that, right? Which is why the temperature around also becomes hot. So heat is generated. By move, rubbing objects together, friction, kinetic friction is going to create heat. Now, if you did not really understand that completely, it's okay as long as you got the basic idea that friction causes heat, and heat is a law of energy. So, in that sense, friction is evil in the sense that it makes us lose energy, it wears objects out. In the sense that it helps us walk, helps us hold things, helps us 
apply brakes, it's a good thing. Now, when I heard this even in school, I was finding it really funny, to be honest, because I found something very interesting. And that is that friction was behaving exactly the same way in both these cases. And what was friction doing? And what is friction doing? Opposing relative motion. It just opposes relative motion, right? Put two objects together, try to move them apart, friction will try and stop that. And that's it. And what you've learned in this module though is friction is a necessary evil. You know, it we can be summarized in that sentence itself. So in our next module, we'll see a much more useful question, which is can we increase it or and can we decrease it?